Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guy, and in this video we are going to look at loading a pre-existing bitmap into Allegro 5. What I'm starting with here is just some blank shell code. Uh, should be pretty much the same as what you've seen in previous videos. Nothing really spectacular here, just uh, creating our event queue, registering it, and having a basic loop where escape uh, gets you out of the program. So, nothing new there. Now, unlike our previous video, we need a new header file to work with our images in Allegro 5. Basically, Allegro 5 without any add-ons whatsoever doesn't support most of your standard desktop variety images, like your JPEG, your bitmaps, and things like that. We need to load the image add-on, which allows us to work with those file types. So what I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to do pound include, and that library is Allegro 5, Allegro images or image dot h perfect and that allows me to work with our different image types and a couple of new variables I'm going to create here one is going to be called image width I'm going to set that equal to zero another one's going to be int image height and those are going to be two variables that I'm just going to use in this program to tell me how big my image is because I'm going to be actually loading a, an image that already exists it's it's on my computer here and I don't I don't actually know how how tall or wide that image is so we need those variables to hold that and then I'm going to create my Allegro bitmap variable named image set equal to null and uh, I've learned my lesson of, of of waiting until the end and forgetting I'm going to come down here right now and do al destroy bitmap and pass an image so I do not forget all right great all right, so that's all the variable declaration we need. Now, like I said before, before we can actually work with any of these images, we need to initialize the add-on. I'm going to come over here to where I'm installing my keyboard. I'm going to do al init image add-on, and that'll initialize uh, the add-on that allows us to work with all our different file types. Now, what I'm going to pull up here is the actual folder just move that on over here to the screen where you can see it and you will see that oh, that's wrong. you will see that here with my code I've just got a couple extra files here I've been looking at um, I have this spider.jpg right here inside my, my folder with my code and that's what I'm working with there uh, so if you're curious uh, where this file is that's where it is alright so now that I have the image add-on uh, loaded I can go ahead and load my spider.jpg image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type image equals al load bitmap and I'm pass in just the file name dot jpg great all right and that loads my spider jpg into memory into this image variable all right so so that drawing becomes a little bit easier I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read in some of the data about this about this image. I'm going to put those into my image width and image height variables. So to get the width of an image, it's al get bitmap width. And I pass an image. And then I'm going to do image height equals al get bitmap height and a passive image. All right, great. So we're just going to store that, that width and that height in these variables. We're going to see why I bothered to do that here in a second. All right. So now we have the variable created. We have the image loaded into memory. Now all we have to actually do is draw it, which is a fairly simple process. I'm going to come down here to my, my drawing routines, and I'm just going to do al draw bitmap. Very much like we saw in the previous video, AL draw bitmap, that, that function is exactly the same. I'm going to type in image. Now here's something new. I'm going to do width divided by 2, height divided by 2. That, that's not the new part. We'll see what the new part is in a second. Finally, any flags. I don't want to use any special flags here. Uh, and when I run this, we're going to see something here. It's going to have to hit a key to get it to do anything. So there's my, my spider. It's probably not what you expected when you heard me say spider. Uh, there's my spider image and we want to be drawing the halfway mark which we are you can see this is the halfway mark so this is the exact center of our image but you'll notice how the image we've drawn 
is down and to the right of that. And that's because when we draw a bitmap, it's drawn from the upper left-hand corner of the bitmap, very much like the screen is drawn from the upper left-hand corner. So to actually get this bitmap to be centered, we actually need to take the center point of the screen and subtract from it half of the width and half of the height of the image to get it to shift up and over uh, half its width and half its height and be centered. And that is the reason I read in this image width and image height variables. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do width divided by 2 minus image width divided by 2. Because we only want half of the image width to make it to the center point. And then image or height divided by 2 minus image height divided by 2. That's why I read, why I read those in. So we can center our image. There we go. And now the image is centered. And that's basically it for loading in images. Like I said, with the Allegro image add-on, uh, you are able to load bitmaps, uh, TIFFs, PNGs, JPEGs. Um, there's some other formats uh, that I do not remember off the top of my head. It reads in quite a few. If you, if you have any questions about that, feel free to check out the Allegro reference manual. Uh, they are all listed in there. And in our next video, we're going to look at, at taking an image that we've loaded in, like my spider.jpg, we're actually going to do stuff with it, maybe rotating it, maybe tinting it, and things like that. There's a lot of stuff we can do with these images. We're going to look at all those functions here coming up.